In this video, I'll show you how to create a simple UV map, hand paint it using selections and stencils, and combine it with some simple procedural scratches. There's quite a bit we'll cover in this video, but because we're working with a very simple object, Captain America's shield, it's going to make these techniques so much easier to learn. Let's dive in. You can download the scene files if you want to follow along, and it will come with the shield pre-made, as well as a simple lighting setup. That said, this is a very simple object, so let me quickly show you how I made it. Start by creating a sphere. Rotate it 90 degrees so the pole is facing forwards. Jump into edit mode and delete the back half of the sphere. Jump back into object mode and scale the semi-sphere on the y-axis until you've got something roughly shield shaped. Let's use some modifiers to give this shield some thickness. Start by adding a solidify modifier and set the thickness to around 0.05. The solidify modifier takes into account your object's scale, and because we scaled it on the y axis this thickness is slightly off. In this case it won't make much of a difference, but for more complex objects it can really make a mess of things. So press Ctrl A in the viewport and choose Apply All. This will set any position and rotation data to 0, and the scale to 1. You should notice the shape of your shield shift very slightly, indicating that we're now using the correct thickness. The edges of the shield are very flat now, so let's add a bevel modifier to smooth this shape out. Set the amount to 0.01 and the segments to 2. This looks good, but this thickness we've created isn't technically real geometry. While it will render perfectly fine, there's currently no way for us to make a UV map for the front and the back, meaning we can't give them separate colours. So I'm going to apply both of these modifiers and turn them into real geometry. A fast way of applying all modifiers on your object at once is to right click in the viewport and choose Convert to Mesh. Now that we have our model finished, I'm going to add a subdivision modifier and set the viewport level to 2 so that the shield is perfectly smooth. I'll also right click in the viewport and choose Smooth Shade to smooth out the individual faces. Next, let's add some UVs. Slide open a new side window and go to the UV editor. You can see that we have some UVs, but they're not very well laid out. They're not circular like the shield, and they only take up about half of the UV space, which is a little bit of a waste. For this simple object, all we really want to do is separate the front faces from the back, which we can do with a single UV seam. Go around the back and select an edge loop by using the Control shift left click shortcut. With these edges selected, right click in the viewport and choose Mark Seam. Then select all the faces on your object and press U to bring up the Unwrap menu and choose the top one, Unwrap. This unwraps our shield into two UV islands. One is for the front and one is for the back. However, this layout has the same problem as the default layout, in that the UVs only take up half the space. And because of their circular shape, there isn't really a way to make them both fit nicely and take up as much room as possible without overlapping. Instead, we're going to move one of these UV islands across and use two textures to paint this model. Using multiple textures like this is a technique called UDIMs, and in theory you can have one, five, or even hundreds of textures. If you're making extremely big, complex creatures like Godzilla or the Kaiju from Pacific Rim, you'll almost certainly be using dozens, if not hundreds, of UDIMs. Now, we certainly don't need hundreds of textures for something as simple as a shield. In fact, even these two textures may be a little bit of overkill. But this is an awesome opportunity to teach you UDIMs on a simple object, so let's take the opportunity while it's really easy to understand. Go to the top menu in the UV editor and choose the New to create a new texture. I'll name it Shield underscore Diffuse for clarity. Since we'll be creating two textures, we don't need the texture size to be too big. So if we create two 1K maps, that's the equivalent of having one 2K map. We don't need an alpha for this texture, and I'll set the color to a mid-gray value, which we can use as the base color for the metal later. The important step here is to check Tiled, as this is the option that allows us to create tiled textures, or UDIMs. If we bring up the side panel with the N key and go to the Image tab, you can see right down the bottom we have the settings for our UDIMs. Currently we only have one tile, and we'd like a second one. So click the plus button to add more tiles. You can choose how many extra tiles you want to add here, but we only want the one, so we can leave most of this at default, although I will change the colour to that same base grey. Now that you can see we have our second UV tile, and we can move one of these islands across into it. It doesn't really matter too much which one of them we move, but I like to use the first box for the front of the object and the second for the back. This just keeps things clearer in my head. Currently both islands are very small, so let's scale them up to fit the tile. We could do this manually, or we could select the first island and go to UVs and choose Pack Islands, making sure the Pack 2 option is set to Closest UDIM. Then we can do the same to the second UV. We now have an object with UVs and a texture created, but technically this texture isn't actually assigned to the object. If you jump over to the Texture Paint workspace and try to paint the shield, you'll get an error message down the bottom saying, Missing Material, Texture Detected. So we'll need to create a material and add the texture to it before we can start painting. Split the image editor in half and change one to the shader editor. In the shader editor, click the New to create a new material. 
Now we can create an image texture node and using the drop down menu, we can choose our shield underscore diffuse texture. The Captain America shield has some very specific rings of color as well as a front and a back. We could try to paint these by hand, but odds are we won't be able to paint these perfect circles without going outside the lines. So instead we're going to paint a selection of faces to limit where our paint can go. Jump into edit mode and select the outermost faces as well as these faces slightly towards the middle. We'll paint these faces red. Go back into paint mode and check the paint mask toggle. This will now use the faces we selected as a mask to paint on. If you haven't already, turn on wireframe in the overlay options for clarity. Select the fill brush and change the color to red. Set the strength to one and click in the viewport. Our selected faces are now all turned red. Repeat these steps to add the white and blue circles. Because we chose a gray base when we created the texture, the back is already that mid gray, so we don't need to paint it. Unfortunately, we don't have any faces we can select to paint the star in the middle and painting it by hand could be inaccurate. Instead, you can create a simple star shape in Photoshop or download one from a number of places on the internet. For anyone who doesn't have access to a program like Photoshop, I've included a star image in the download. Choose the draw brush and in the tool settings, scroll down until you see the texture mask tab. Click the big new button and then click this little texture properties button. This will take us to another window where you can open up the star image. Once loaded, go back to the tool tab and find the mapping options and change this to stencil. If you move the mouse back into the viewport, you'll see this star shape appear as an overlay, but currently it's sitting in the corner of the screen. You can move the stencil around using Alt and right click. You can resize it with Shift Alt and right click. And although we don't need it for this stencil, you can rotate it with Control Alt and right click. Align the star over the blue section of the shield and paint on the star. Congratulations, you've now finished the base color. It is extremely important that we now save this texture. Blender doesn't save these hand painted textures by default, not even if you save the Blender file. You need to manually go to the image editor, go to the image menu and save as. Make sure to leave this open bracket UDIM close bracket in the file name. This is needed so that Blender knows which UV tile relates to which texture. This is looking great, but I wanna make this thing look a little more like scratch metal. We finished all the UVs and textures, so feel free to close the UV editor window. I want the shield to be made of metal, so crank the metallic up to one in the shader editor and bring the roughness down to around about 0.2, so it's a little more reflective. Next, I want to add some scratches to break up the surface of the metal. Create two Veroni textures and change the top one to distance to edge. I'll then create two map range nodes and plug each Veroni into them. These map range nodes will work similar to a color ramp and we'll use them to add more contrast to the Veroni. On the top map range node, set the from min to 0.01 .01 and the from max to zero. Previewing this shows us the contrasted texture, which is now starting to look a little more like cracks. Join these two map range nodes by plugging them into a mixed color node and setting it to multiply. Now if you increase the from min on the second map range node, you'll see some of the cracks getting cut away, leaving us with more of a random result. If you'd like more cracks in the shield, you can adjust the scale on the Veroni textures, although I would recommend adding a value node to control both of them at once. These cracks are looking pretty good, but they're still a little straight. I want to add some random swirl to them. To achieve this, add a mapping node to the two Veroni textures, the shortcut is Control T, then plug another Veroni into the location on the mapping node. This adds a bit of randomness to how the final textures are placed on the object. You won't need much, I set the scale to 2.5 and got some nice results. Now I want to add these scratches on top of our base color. So I create another mixed color node and plug the base into the top slot and then the scratches into the bottom. Set the mix type to add. The colors here are looking good, but I really want these scratches to cut into the surface of the paint. So it looks like the paint has been scratched away, revealing the metal underneath. This can be done with a simple bump node. Add one and plug the cracks into it. On a bump node, white values push up and black values push down. So currently our cracks are actually pushing out of the surface. You can flip this around with the invert toggle. These cracks are also very deep, so set the distance to a low value, something like 0.001. We're just about there, but I would like to add a little variation to the roughness to make it more realistic. Create a noise texture and a color ramp. Plug the noise into the ramp and the ramp into the roughness slot on your material. You can then adjust both these new nodes to break up the metal color. For something like this, I'll increase the detail and roughness on the noise and add more contrast by dragging the black and white values closer on the ramp. Remember, we probably don't want any of this metal to be completely roughed up, so I'll lower the white value to a gray to bring back some of that shine. This shield has very much been a crash course on how to do simple UVs and texture painting, but if you would like to learn a technique where you can paint your models without having to UV unwrap them first, jump on over to this tutorial.